Good day, folks. Greg Bud from Bud's Baits here. Welcome to the African Lure Craftsman. That's our base colors done, creating a unique relief of the scales using my sandback technique. Next, we'll add the final detail and bring the lure to life. So what we're going to do now is uh, on sods or pulleys, you have a series of dots to run along the lateral line. So we're going to do it in that blue band there. And for that, I've cut pre-cut stencils here. I use these for all my lures. As you can see, they're marked for what lures they're on. There's different sizes. For this particular one, I'm going to use this stencil. What I always do is I've got a little round file here and I make sure the holes are clean. Because paint does tend to choke them up as you use them more, more and more. And as you can see, I've used these quite a bit already. Just make sure they're clean. No debris. And we've got that, guy, that ready. So uh, you'll notice here I've got little pieces of blue tack or sticky stuff both sides. The holes are running in a slight curve. You'll notice the back hole and the front hole are smaller just to give it a little bit of added realism. And with sardines or pilchards they've always got a slight mark on the cheek or on the gill plate. So what I would do is I would start the first dot on the gill plate. Stick it down there, stick it down there. Check that your angle is right, you'll be able to see the blue paint through through the stencil. Okay, I'm ready for that. So what I want for that is a little bit of black. Though the dots would be black, never use real black because nothing in nature is really black. So I've got a mixture of a, a, a deep blue with a black in here, already mixed with its solvent. Um, I'll add that into airbrush, give it a bit of a whisk, just check, perfect, move that out of the way, very lightly, you don't want to go too hard because you'll have running underneath and you can always go back over it, do it once or twice, Usually you have a little piece of sticky stuff around because you don't want remnants of, of tack left on the lure. Lift that off where the sticky stuff was sticking down. And you have your, your lure coming more and more alive. The next step is most bait fish will have a little bit of a sheen to them, whether it be a purple or a pink. I'm going to use a little bit of pink on the gills here. Uh, okay. Again, always check. It's good. And just on the edge of this top gill plate, I'm going to do a little smell of pink. Stay. And on the other side, just there. Now for a little bit of a touch on the fins, which will be a tinge of yellow. One side. It'll be dry already. We just want to be careful anyway because it could rub off still. I'm going to hold the lure up a bit. Two sides. Okay, so now to put a little, little bit of white. Uh, most fish will have a white or whitish belly. And besides, we're going to use a little bit of artistic lightness here. So, what we start doing now, spraying white directly onto the lure, you're going to get bleed over. It's going to dull the silver there. So what we're going to do is from the angle, so that the spray goes over the edge, is we're going to do each side at a time. 
holding the airbrush quite close so we just get a finish with Okay, now for the other side. Okay, now you'll notice there's still a line running down the middle where the foil joins. Though it's sealed already with the clear coat, I'm going to go directly from top, holding the airbrush as close as possible to the lure so as not to get any overbleed and fill that gap. Okay, back done, let's go to the front. So all I want to do now is just a slight tint of green just to make it into a more natural sort of color. This is a color preferred by my clients. I personally have done many very realistic baits and they're not quite as bright. They're very effective as well, but these are just as effective. Anyway, let's get to it. The green I use is a very bright green. Again, auto base coats. I've pre-mixed these and I have them in large quantities. But what I want to do here, in this case, is water it down a lot or thin it down with solvents a lot. So I'm going to get a little bit of thinners into my, my airbrush, make sure that's working properly. So my color's uh, really mixed and it's in there. Just going to check how thin it is on the, a white piece of paper and that's perfect. Just a very light green there because we just want a basic, basic tint of it. So just under the blue and not going all the way down the body. I'll just add a little bit of green. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. There it is there, and we'll do the same on the other side. So there we have it, guys. A um, little bit of a green stripe there, just under the blue. It's all these little extra accents that kind of take the lure from being okay to making it look really, really special. Um, and once we get the gills on there and the eyes and the epoxy coating, you've got a really, really good lure. So there's one more thing I'll do before uh, we epoxy and do the gills, and that's just making sure the back is fully covered. And I like to put a little bit of a pearlescent or glitter back on there not much it's very very fine glitter really mixed into my paints and i'll do that now okay so i've pre-mixed my paint here it's a, a the same sort of color blue as the stripe with a little bit of black in it but it has got a pearlescent glitter in it so we're just going to go over the back this gives it a much better look again i don't know if the camera will pick up that glitter going on there Okay guys, so now we're going to glue on the eyes um, and we're going to do the gill. So let me just get my eyes out. Okay, my eyes down here, those are, not my actual eyes. And as you can see, I have a variety of different sizes. For this particular lure, we need a 8mm uh, plain silver chrome, which I'll be using for here. Simple, super glue. A thick viscosity super glue, although it says thin on the bottle, I've used this bottle for a thicker glue, so ignore that. This is a very thick viscosity. It tends to be more forgiving and doesn't spill out of the bottle when you're actually putting the eye in. So it's a simple trick of a little dot in the bottom. I always have my pins handy over here. Smear that around the whole cavity. Get the eye, and the other thing with the thick viscosity is it takes longer to dry, which is also a benefit. And you you can actually move the eye around as well in the socket. Bit of rubber, back of a small file here. Press that down. Make sure all the bubbles come out. 
hold it for a few seconds. And done. Okay, so now for the other side, we just turn the lure over and we go through the same process. Little drop to the pin. Make sure you cover the whole base of the socket and the reason for that is so you don't get bubbles at a later stage coming up through the epoxy when there's trapped air. Make sure the eye is pointing the right direction. These particular eyes are not just circles within a circle. They are actually 3D realistic eyes. So I've got the point going backwards. Put that in there before we press it down. Make sure it lines up, which this one does. And of course the sockets are pre-positioned, so it shouldn't be a problem, but sometimes a tiny little difference can make it look out of place then press down again. That should do it and there we have our little pilchard bait, sardine bait, almost ready to go. Eyes perfectly positioned, protruding a little bit. Now I always hand paint the gills on. You could make a stencil and spray them but I think a little bit of a, 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 a touch by hand is always a good thing. Uh, I use a little zero size sable brush. I go through a fair few of these, not that many, but you know, one will maybe do 100 lures or so. My standard auto red paint, it's a darker sort of red, it's a bit of a blood red. And how I do that is I always get a couple of drops, put them into the lid here. I've got my thinners next to me, thin it down a bit. And then with a very steady hand, turn the lure around, hold it firmly, and starting midway up the gill. Just a line following down under the gill there. Turn it around again, a bit more paint. Okay, so now we're going with the other side, again, steady hand, shaky today, and I haven't even been drinking. Holding my breath, that will do. Now for the underside, a bit more thinners. Continuity, we want it to end exactly where the opposite side gill ends. And there we have it. So guys, that is the end of the painting. Uh, and next we will be going on to the epoxing process and uh, hopefully get the lures finished. To be sure not to miss the next video, please hit the subscribe. I'm having a few problems here. To be sure not to sorry, be sure not to miss the next video, please hit the subscribe button below and the notification bell.